Thanksgiving is coming. Just, uh -huh. just saying. Those ladies are in a hurry this morning. All right, so what were you just saying about the, the car here? I said one of the very few cars, so no matter which angle you look at it, it looks good. I mean, just take a picture of that, right? It's art, the design, the corner, the spoilers, art. And the side profile, art. Same thing here. The fender, the structure, the length, the height, everything is just well balanced, symmetrical. I could go on all day. I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. It is a very, very pretty shaped car. Yeah. That's very nice. And all the models, like the Trans Am and these guys, this is the best of the artistically designed car, I think, of the Camaros. They all have some merit, but this one, you can't find any fault from the front, the side, the back, the top. And you've done an outstanding job to accentuate all the good stuff. Well, thank you. And the black combo is going to look good. Yeah, I think we're done. I'll see you. All right. Have a good day. <laughs> I got some goodies here. So. Yeah. Don't know if you got a chance to see those since they were done. I think the last one I took when they were on the stand. Yeah. So they're, they're all done. So they came yes, out nice. Yes, they are. Very good. Looking good. All right, so today we're turning to drivetrain. Did you get it? What? The drive shaft? No, no, this is all drivetrain. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I haven't ordered the drive shaft yet. Okay. But uh, we are starting on radiator hoses, radiators, air intakes, all kinds of stuff. Um, so as I've said, I dropped the radiator in a couple weeks back just to see what it looks like. That's nice. That fits in there good. <clears throat> nice and strong. Um, I've got a whole bunch of different radiator hoses that don't fit. I think I have one that actually fits. Really? Yeah. This one. Let's put it next to that one. Daco 71824. Forget how I did this here. I think it goes this way. Let's see if I can get it back on there. I don't have to clamp some stuff here yet, but. That's from one and a half to one to five sixteenths also? No, that's one and a half to one and a half. Okay. So that doesn't look good right now, but if I put it all the way up in there, that actually levels out okay. I'll get that on, hang on a minute. There we go, that's better. As soon as you get that all twisted in there, that one fits like a glove. So I'm happy with that one. This one on the top, you would think would be straightforward. It's just a simple S. Right. But it's inch and a half here and inch and five sixteenths here. Which this, ah, uh, so close. So I've been just basically looking at Summit Racing and Amazon and whatever, well mostly Summit Racing and Daco and whatever, just look at the part selectors, you know, and you can select the two hose diameters on each end, you know, inch and a half, inch and five sixteenths, and then it'll show you all the hoses that are like that. Right. And you gotta eyeball it and say, yeah, that shape looks about right. <laughs> and that one looks perfect. Yeah. And the length seemed right, but it, no, it doesn't work. Um, so I have another one coming today, hopefully. That's probably going to be too long. <laughs> I tried uh, one of these flex guys. And these, these things don't really flex very easily. Eh. Now what is it you don't like about the flex hoses? That one? Well, any flex hoses you say you don't like. Well, they don't flex very well. And it's really hard. To... Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> and i got to get this to make a, a double flex there. Right. So this might work. I was playing with it yesterday. You know, if you can get that in there and it kind of... You don't want to put too much pressure on the right. things here either. So you can see it, it really doesn't want to... That's a big ass to make. That's yeah. a big ass, right? Plus, I got to find one of these that has two different hose diameters on it. Right. 
So, for all of you YouTube family guys and gals, um, I was looking at this Inspector and a couple other uh, companies make these uh, like stainless um, stainless core flexible things that you can bend to whatever shape right. you want. But they have these big ends on them that sort of clamp onto the stainless hose and they have reducers to fit the different sizes. I was wondering if anybody has any experience with those. If I look at the reviews, a lot of people say they suck and they just blow out. Right. Um, I, I may have a problem here too. I was looking at this because of this adapter. You can barely get uh, to the ridge of this thing here. So if I get one of those big old fat adapters, I'm not even sure I could fit it in here with the, the hoses and everything. So I don't even know if that would work. Um, so. With that, I don't know if we'll get that hose in time today for the video, but if anybody has any thoughts on that, let me know. And then, second thing is the cold air intake, which I was telling Pops about. This one really ticked me off to no end. So, trying to find a cold air intake for a 77 Camaro with an LS is a lot harder than you would think. <laughs> All right. But I found one, so Spectre makes one that's got the cold air box that fits inside here. It's all set up, it's got the math sensor adapter, the whole thing, for a set, for, you know, second gen Camaro LS, and they won't ship it to California. So, illegal in California. I'm like, what? So for whatever reason, that particular unit is banned in California, which I don't understand. Um, you know, they, they ban a lot of things, like if you had the small block Chevy or whatever and you wanted to put some crazy manifold or something, right. I could see why that would be banned. They're like, no, you're not allowed to do that. But this engine combination is already doesn't exist, or you can't, right. it doesn't come from the factory that way. So the only way you would have it is if someone's doing an aftermarket swap, which is either legal because of what I'm doing, right. or it's a pre-smog car. <laughs> either way. But it's air. It's air. Yeah. It's a freaking tube. Yeah. That's all it is, is a tube. Um, and then I said, oh, okay, sod that. So I went on Amazon, tried to buy it on Amazon. Nope, will not ship to California. And uh, so I was thinking about, well, you know, what can I do about that? Maybe I can get it from out of state or whatever. And then I was reading on forums. And one guy said, you know, he had the E-Rod engine like this, took it to the referee, and ha he said he had a Spectre intake on it. Right. And the referee wouldn't allow it because it's a banned part. Yeah, but he didn't say the model number, but I'm sure that's what it was. So even though it's just a freaking tube, the, the referee wouldn't allow it. And he said, oh, you have to get one from a 2011 Camaro or something. Just how freaking stupid the, the referees are. So you have to make your own. And even then, now what's the difference? I don't know. So I got this guy. This is an Air Aid. I wasn't quite sure how this worked when I bought it. I thought all these pieces came apart. I'll put it up on the table here in a minute, but I guess not. So I guess you have to cut these segments out to whatever you want. Um, and you know, this you can manufacture yourself. You don't need any special tools or anything. So we're going to go with this. Um, I think it actually looks kind of cool. Is that black? I mean, is that the rubber or plastic? Plastic. It's like, okay. a, it's like ABS plastic, I think. So it looks kind of cool. It kind of matches the color scheme under there, the, the matte black. Um, and maybe down the road we'll you know, get a custom aluminum made or something or whatever, but it's just frustrating as hell. But I thought they did a lot of metal. Isn't the LS kit with metal air intake? No, they just don't allow that kit. Okay. I mean, al almost all of these things are made out of aluminum. It's just okay. a four-inch aluminum tube. Right. That's all it is. For whatever reason, that one is banned. That specific kit's with That banned. specific kit is banned. Uh, California, I hate you. God, Son, freaking irritating. It's not getting a royalty. Yeah, I guess. So anyway, so we're gonna putz around with this today. Um, see if we can get that to fit in there, and uh, we'll have to manufacture our own cold air intake box and the whole nine yards. It really sucks, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, so we'll get to partying with that. So first thing we're looking at is how to <clears throat> install the shroud on here, and it <laughs> it looks like they want you to drill right into the top and bottom caps of the radiator, which is kind of scary, but that's what the instructions say. <clears throat> they show three different types of mounting, and rail mount says 
The shroud should mount directly up against the rails on the top of the bottom of the radiator. Put two screws or rivets, and that's the picture they show, which is utterly useless. Um, and then the others are with brackets and other things, which we don't have, so... And they have the, the holes marked there, so that must be where they go. So, we'll uh, pre-drill these and then get some self-tapping screws they supplied to go in there. I'm sorry, but there's something scary about drilling holes into your brand new radiator. Yes, it is. Well, you get the metal shavings out of there if they went down in there. Alright, so let's get the plastic off here. and. Uh, we just have these laying on here in case you didn't, you couldn't tell. Yeah, we gotta peel all this plastic off. Yeah. Looks like you got it. To try and not tear it around the corners here. It's so pretty under there. Perfect black and white interior. Hey, careful. Here, I'll hold this down. Of course, I put that through the, the rivets there. That's lame. Oh, whatever. Alright, where's that nut driver? Alrighty. That takes care of that. So the fans. Gonna figure out what we want to do with the fans. We were a little confused when we looked at it first because the <laughs> the holes don't line up with anything. We're like, wait a minute, that's not right. Um, but we have these little mounting brackets that go there. So I think because if you want that to point straight up, it doesn't line up with anything. So right. that that doesn't work. Um, I think I want the, I want the wiring going that way. I could do this, like that maybe. I got this big flat thing on the top, which is kind of ugly, but whatever. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, so we were missing uh, one of the bags of screws, so we only have four, four bolts here instead of eight. So we just crisscrossed them like this just to hold them in place for now. Uh, so we'll go with that. And we'll be able to run the, the cables along the bottom there. Um, yeah, let's drop it back in, see how it looks. And for the uh, radiator rubber mounts, we've got these guys. Summit or somewhere. It's a good mark part number, looks like. And this would be for the uh, Camaro Heavy Duty Radiator. I'm pretty sure this is for the standard duty here, an ex heavy duty or three row radiator from the factory. All right, as Pops pointed out, it, it sits a little cockeyed in there and it was like that before. Um, that's kind of, that's, that is what it is. I can't really move it around much. It kind of wants to stay right there, but um, as you can see, it fits real nice, snugs in there perfectly. The, Petcock's got room down there. Very nice fit. I cannot complain about that. Plenty of room between the engine and the fans. All right, so we're not gonna do all the fan wiring and stuff today. I still have to figure out how I wanna do that, but uh, anybody that's paying attention, uh, one of the constraints I have is the ECM, ECU, whatever, um, has a fan relay output on it and the instructions say that has to be connected to a fan otherwise it'll cause a fault um, so that'll only drive one fan or may maybe both fans or whatever but I also have the vintage air stuff that also has to be able to control the fan so I was going to run the input or the output from the ECM into the uh, some kind of combiner circuit with diodes and whatever, so we get the signal from the com from the vintage air and the signal from the ECU, combine those together to drive the fans, but I don't know if that's enough of a load to be able to get the ECU to say, yeah, the fan's on. So I'm gonna try that, but if that doesn't work, then I'm gonna hook one fan up directly to the ECU and then uh, 
that fan will also be able to turn the other fan on, but the uh, vintage air will only be able to turn one of the two fans on. Something like that. We'll see. Um, anybody has any experience with that, let me know. Uh, so, cold air intake? Yep. All right, and lots of hacking and cutting. <laughs> Used a hacksaw, drywall saw, and finally, circular saw. Circular saw is the way to go. Um, so here's what we ended up with. So we have this guy with the 90 degree. So he'll fit here. About like yay. Uh, if you try to go too far down, it hits the cooling fan, but I think up about here is okay. So that fits. Um, this is the coupler that goes up by the engine. We got a flex coupler to go down below. This is the filter that came with the LS3 and put a 45 on it. Fits in there. So we're just trying to get all the couplers on and we'll show you how it all goes together. All right, there we go. It's kind of just loose fit in here, but that looks like that's going to work. Uh, we can uh, adjust this a little bit up and down here as necessary. Um, I was hoping I had the windshield washer bottle to see if it interfered there, but I don't have one. I thought I had the old one, but I have the overflow bottle instead. So, all right. So next thing we got to get the MAF sensor in here. All right, there we go. So this guy, um, we have a little more work to do. I got to get some RTV or something to seal this. Um, we just ran a, a nut up from the, or a bolt rather from the bottom. So kind of comes halfway into this mounting bracket. And then this one comes in from the other side. Maybe that's okay. If not, we'll get, I got to get a longer bolt that we can run all the way through and put a nut on the bottom. But that seems like that's going to work. Um, seems pretty snug. This guy, we can move him around a little bit maybe, figure out where it wants to go, but I think it'll be okay. Got the flex flex joint here so the engine can move around. Yeah, you like? Yeah, I like it. All right. I'm going to go check the front ports and see if that radiator hose showed up yet. Okay. And you can... All right, so radiator hose didn't show up, so I can't look at that yet. That'll be here probably tomorrow. Um, so, anybody have any thoughts about this? Um, let me know. Um, but it uh, seemed to have gone together pretty well. So we'll just have to fabricate some kind of custom box here. Um, maybe I can try getting in touch with Spectre and see if I can get just that box. I don't know if they would sell it or not, but I can ask. Um, otherwise, we'll just make one. Or just, you know, put a bracket on it and call it a day for now. <laughs> Uh, it's okay as it is. I don't strictly need a cold air intake box on this thing, but anywho, uh, yeah. So we've got the the other radiator hose to go. Um, I've bought the steering box and pitman arm and the power steering cable or um, hoses. So we'll do that probably next time, uh, and then we're just gonna kind of work our way back. Um, we still got to figure out all the brake lines right here where they're crashing into this stuff here. I have bought some extra parts I hope will allow me to deal with that. Um, we can get the drive shaft ordered and we've got to get the fuel lines finished up. Get a fuel tank. Uh, that's, that's about it. It'll be ready to fire pretty much after that so um, hopefully you know the next few weeks or so, six weeks, something like that, I'll get this baby fired up. I hope that would be nice. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm mumbling and babbling. So uh, thanks, everybody, for pitching in, chiming in, watching in, whatever. Um, we will catch you on the next one. Let me know if you have any uh, thoughts about this. Thanks.